Scotland is known for its stunning castles, but this one behind me really takes the mickey. This is Dunorter Castle, a fortress on the east coast of Scotland, near Stonehaven in Aberdeenshire. If you previously visited Dunorter Castle, please let me know in the comments below. Whilst you're there, what is your favourite castle in Scotland? Needless to say, if you're planning on visiting Scotland this summer, or if you're Scottish and you haven't been here before. Guilty as charged prior to today. I would highly recommend visiting this place. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning. But what is the history of this masterpiece? Well, the surviving buildings today were built around the 15th, 16th centuries, although the initial fortification is from the early Middle Ages. The story starts with the Picts, as all good stories do. One of the earliest references to the Norter Castle comes in the 7th century, in the annals of Ulster. In 681 and 694 AD, two sieges are reported at Dunfoyler. Although there is some debate about where Dunfoyler is, um, it may be a location nearby, many argue that it refers to today's Dunnerter Castle. Although the full context of the sieges is unknown, many argue it refers to the Pictish king and the king of Fortu, one of the most powerful Pictish kingdoms, King Brady, son of Belly, who during this time was probably looking to extend his power. Although we often view Pictland as one unitary kingdom, one unitary state, the the reality was, at various points in the history of the Picts and Pic land, there was various kingdoms or provinces of Picts, potentially seven as the number often quoted. There does seem to be some sort of Pictish over kingship as such, um, or in a modern context, some sort of federal structure um, over the states of America, if you want to view it that way. There were separate Pictish kingdoms, but then some sort of over kingship, uh, kingship sorry, seemed to develop. Um, and this potentially, these sieges um, of the castle behind me, um, or the fortress behind me that the castle was later built upon, may have been part of this unification um, or checking arrival power. Just north of Dunnator Castle is the sea stack of Dunnacare, an ancient Pictish fort, part of which has fallen into the sea over the centuries. This is considered one of Scotland's oldest Pictish forts, and it was quite a sight in its day. The University of Aberdeen, a few years ago, released an animation of what the fort may have looked like in its day. It was likely built for a king and it was a show of strength and power. But let's turn our attention back to Dunorter Castle. There are numerous interesting elements in the history of Dunorter Castle. In the 5th century AD, St Ninian, an early Christian missionary, established a chapel um, on the site of Dunorter. According to the chronicles of the kings of Alapa, Donald II of Scotland was killed at Dunorter during a Viking raid in 900 AD. Given the geography of this location, right on the east coast of Scotland, um, overlooking the North Sea, it would have been, there would have been numerous run-ins with the Vikings over the centuries. In the 10th century, the first king of England, Ethelstan, led a force into Scotland in 934 AD, and is said to have reached as far as Dunorter. The poet Blind Harry relates that William Wallace captured Dunorter from the English in 1297, during the First Scottish War of Independence. He is said to have imprisoned 4,000 defeated English soldiers in the church and burned them alive. Around 1359, William Keith, Marshal of Scotland, married Margaret Fraser, the niece of Robert the Bruce, and was granted the barony of Dunorter at this time. William Keith completed construction of the Tower House at Dunorter. William Keith's descendants were made Earl's Marshal, a peerage in Scotland, in the mid-15th century, and they held Dunorter until the 18th century. In 1531, James V exempted the Earl's men from military service on the grounds that Dunorter was one of the principal strengths of our realm. Two decades later, in 1581, 
George Keith succeeded as 5th Earl Marshal and began a large-scale reconstruction that saw the medieval fortress converted into a more comfortable home. A pet lion is said to have been brought to the castle and housed in what is known as the Lion's Den. The castle behind me also played a significant role in the English Civil Wars and the Wars of the Three Kingdoms. On the 1st of January 1951, King Charles II was crowned at Schoon. And the honours of Scotland, the regalia of the crown, the sword and the sceptre were used in the ceremony. Oliver Cromwell's troops were in Lothian, however, and the honours of Scotland couldn't be returned to Edinburgh at that time. In June, the Privy Council met and they decided to take the, the honours of Scotland to Dunotter Castle. George Ogilvy was put in charge of safeguarding the castle and the honours of Scotland were brought by Catherine Drummond um, into the castle in bags of wool, hidden in bags of wool. The castle soon came under blockade by Cromwell's forces. The honours, one way or another, were eventually smuggled out piece by piece and they were taken to an old Kirk in Kenneth nearby just south of this location of Stonehaven. When Cromwell's forces had enough power to take the castle, they raided the castle and searched the grounds, but the honours of Scotland weren't found. When Charles II was restored to the crown in 1660, the honours of Scotland were taken from Kenneth, the old Kirk in Kenneth, and given back to the crown. The Northern Castle also played a role in the Jacobite Risings. In the Jacobite Rising of 1715, George Keith of the Keith family played a leading role at the Battle of Sheriff Muir. After the rising was eventually suppressed, George Keith fled to the continent and eventually became um, the French ambassador to Frederick the Great of Prussia. Talk about landing on your feet. After Keith had fled to the continent, the government seized the Northern Castle and his other estates. The castle was sold to the York Mining Company in 1716. As we have seen, the history of the Northern Castle is as special as the castle itself. Speaking of the history of Scotland, what is the genetic history of Scotland? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell uh, and give this video a like. For ways to support my channel, they will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.